reflections and square roots. So the first thing you need to know is um, we're going to be talking a little bit about the square root family. It works kind of like our other stuff that we've been dealing with. You can use f of x if you like, or we can just write down the square root. And like our absolute value family, like our quadratic, which was the x squared family, things that happen on the inside are the opposite of what you think. Things that happen on the outside are exactly what you think. Left and right, up and down, that kind of deal. Stuff that's associated with the x is the left and right movement. With the y, it's the up and down. In reflections of a function, we have a few different ways that we can do this. Um, oftentimes, reflections are over <coughs> the x-axis, the y-axis, and sometimes they're even done um, over the lines uh, y equals x and y equals the opposite of x. I don't think we'll be talking about that today, but those are the most common ones. And we're going to be working with the x-axis and the y-axis ones the most. So our main ideas, there are basically two of them, and one has two parts. The first main idea is we're dealing with the square root function. In case you don't know what the square root function looks like, if you're drawing a graph, this is the general shape of the square root function. And then the second thing we're talking about is reflecting over the axes. That's the second main idea. And there are two kinds, the x-axis and the y-axis. So we're going to talk about both of those. First, if you see something where you're changing the x thing inside of a parenthesis, then this would be considered to be a reflection over the y-axis. And I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. And then the second one, if you're taking the opposite of the function, remember f of x means y, so instead of having a y value of 10, now you take the opposite of that, that's negative 10, so you're going from 10 above to 10 below, this is a reflection over the x-axis. And these two things really are the two biggest things I want you to remember for today. If you see a changing of something, bless you, inside the parentheses, that's a reflection over the y-axis. If you see it on the outside, that's a reflection over the x-axis. Maybe we should even write that down. Negative inside we know that that's talking about y-axis. If you see the negative on the outside, that means we're going over the x-axis. Let's say um, we have a line, and this line is y equals 2x plus 3. And we're going to graph that line on the axis down below, coordinate axes, and then go from there. So looking at that line, I know the y-intercept is positive 3. And I know that the slope is 2, which means go up 2 over 1 in order to get to the next points. And so I can graph that graph by plotting points. I could have made a table if I wanted to. But in general, this is kind of what it looks like. And then I can draw my line going through all those points. So this was the line that was highlighted. And now what we see is we see this negative sign that's on the outside <coughs> right here. And we're supposed to hypothesize what we think is going to happen. So what do you think is going to happen? Jeff. Okay, can't use that because that's not what I've talked about today. Danielle. Um. 
Okay, Ernesto. It's gonna go like not this way, but like down. Okay, I, I, I'm not saying what you guys are saying. I'm wrong, but that's not what I'm looking for. Emmanuel. I like it and correct. It will be reflected over the x <coughs> axis. About two minutes ago, in the orange, if the negative was on the outside, we said it was going to be reflected over the x-axis. Not too long ago. So now, as I go to graph this thing, reflection over the x-axis means the x-axis acts like a mirror. So if I pick a point, for example, the point 0, 3, and I mirror it over the x-axis, now it becomes 0, negative 3. If I pick the point negative 1, 1, now mirrored over becomes negative 1, negative 1, so on and so forth. And what you kind of notice is there's a pattern, kind of like how you went up by 2, now you're going down by 2, or up 2 to the left, if you will. And you can re-graph this thing, and you can see how it's mirrored over the x-axis. So they said graph in your calculator, we're not going to do that thing. This was a graph that was reflected, as we just got done saying, over the x-axis, which is right here. And if you graphed it, which we did in a different color, the pink, each point was reflected over the x-axis. So the big idea is if the negative is on the outside, or in other words, you're taking the opposite y value, you are reflecting over the x-axis. Let's try another one. This time, as we look at this graph, we see y equals 2x plus 3 again. So let's graph that. I still have my y-intercept at 3, so I put a dot at 3. The slope is still 2, so I go up 2 and over 1. And you can make a table if you want, an xy table. Um, when I get something in slope-intercept form, I actually just prefer to plot the points because it's pretty easy to do with slope-intercept. At least I think so. And then I notice that the second part has this negative x on the inside. And that tells me I'm probably going to be reflected over the y-axis. Very good. So reflected over y-axis. And if I want to reflect it over the y-axis, that means just mirror across. So here's my y-axis right here. Oh, shoot, I don't want to do that. Pardon me. Just take that off. So first I'm going to graph it, and then we'll do that. So this one can't be reflected because it's on the y-axis. And again, if I draw my dots, This is what it looks like as a reflection over the y-axis. And if I <coughs> put something there kind of to see that, so if I look at the y-axis, here it is. You can see how that's been mirrored over the y-axis. <coughs> Now, here's something interesting just to take a look at. So before I told you that we can look at the table, for example, let's say I'm looking at some points from the red graph. Like, for example, let's say I was looking at the point 0 for x, and I plug in a 0, 2 times 0, 0 plus 3. That's why I have the y-intercept 0, 3. And let's say I plugged in a 1 then, and if I plug in a 1, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3. That's 5. And then if I plug in a 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3. That's 7. And you can see those points plotted on the red graph. And then, likewise, if I pick those same kind of values for x and y in the blue one over here that's highlighted, then what I would see is when I plug in a 0, I have 2 times the opposite of 0, which is 0 plus 3. That's still 3. That's why my y-intercept didn't change. But now if I plug in a 1, 2 times the opposite of 1 would be negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1, and that's why we have 1, 1. And if I plug in a 2, 
then 2 times the opposite of 2 would be negative 4 plus 3, which would be negative 1. And that's why I have 2, negative 1. And you can actually plot the points out of a table if you want. Not necessary, but definitely possible. Something really interesting about the table that you'll notice is that if you are at 0, um, which means basically you're on the y-axis, nothing changed. However, when you look at what's happening to the other points, they're going directly opposite in the value. For example, if I were to pick, um, instead of 1, negative 1 in the blue, so let me just add a few more points here. If I picked negative 1 in the blue, I see that my point for negative 1 would be 5. And then if I picked negative 2, I see that my point would be 2 times the opposite of negative 2, which would be 4 plus 3, which would be 7. And what I want you to notice is this. Notice how when I had a positive 1, I had 5 in the red, but when I had a negative 1, I had 5 in the blue. And when I had positive 2 in the red, I had 7. And when I had negative 2 in the red, I also had 7. And what this is saying is that if I take the opposite of the x values, I still get the same y value. That's a reflection over the y-axis. Okay, another way to think about it. In number three, they give us some funky, crazy function that you really even don't have to know anything about if you understand this reflection stuff. And so I'm not even going to really talk about that function. We're just going to kind of do it without knowing and understanding. It's kind of like when I talk about driving the car and you don't really know how the engine works, but you can still drive a car. Same kind of deal. I just want to show you that once you get a pattern, there's a lot of things that can open up for you. So we're looking at this graph, f of x equals 5 sine 30x. And then what we see is we see that they talk to us about doing the opposite. And that opposite thing is on the outside. What happens when the opposite thing is on the outside? It's reflected over the x-axis. So I write that down, reflected over x-axis. And if I write down this equation, um, what they want me to show is that when I put the opposite in front, the new equation will look like this. Um, I'm not going to write f of x. I'm just going to show what it looks like. It would be the opposite of whatever you saw. So that's 5 sine parentheses 30x. And that negative sign shows up over there. So when the negative is on the outside, it's a reflection over the x-axis. That's kind of the, one of the big ideas for today. In number four, they do the other part. Instead of saying um, negative on the outside, they say negative on the inside. So now we take a look at that and we go, okay, they want the negative on the inside. Here it is, on the inside. What happens? Well, first of all, we know that the new equation is going to be 5 sine of 30 times negative x, or opposite x, because that's what the negative is. You could have written, wrote, written, excuse me, you could have written it as 5 <coughs> sine negative 30x, because it's being multiplied all together, no big deal. And we know that this is a reflection over the y-axis, because it's on the inside. So the big idea is understanding now when you see the negative on the inside, it's over the y-axis. And when you see the negative on the outside, it's over the x-axis. That's it. Big idea. So now instead of doing sine functions or square root functions, they use x squared. And so they want to know, oh, wait, what, what should happen here if I see that? So let's just take a look at these graphs.